Close your eyes, imagine being eight years old and alone in a half-empty house with your five-year-old sister. It's 6.30 a.m. and you have to get yourself and your sister ready for school. You take on the role of a caregiver as an adolescent. The reason? Your mother has been missing for a day now and you have no clue what you're going to eat. It was a hard feeling, but when you run into something like that on a regular basis, you it's kind of like a survival mechanism. You just do it. You know, that's something that you have to do. Surviving, that's one way to describe Whitney Johnson and her childhood growing up in Saginaw, Michigan, where trials and tribulations were a part of her everyday life. My mother started using crack cocaine when she was about 29 and you know she had a boyfriend that used it and sold it and that's how she got introduced to the drug. Um, she's been shaking the addiction ever since. That addiction facing Whitney's mother Bethany forced Whitney to land in foster care for parts of her childhood. There she would meet Mrs. Williams, an individual she still remains close to. Another person that means a lot to Whitney and really helped her growing up was her grandmother Vera. My grandmother is the most amazing woman in my life. Um, if I can be half the woman she is, then I am doing fantastic in life. She is amazing and you know as I was growing up, once she retired, my grandmother became my guardian. So she took guardianship of me and she still takes care of me. My grandmother is the person that I go to for everything. She's that the only stable person that I really have in my life right now. Even with these people in her life today, Whitney always remembers what it was like dealing with a drug addicted parent growing up. There were times when Whitney's personal belongings would go missing. That's when Whitney knew her mother sold those items for drugs and this frequently took place. That alone was definitely a very hard situation to deal with and you know it's something that I deal with still today. I hold on to things tightly because my mother took a lot from me so as an adult I hold on to things that are that is given to me because I just feel like one day it's going to be gone and I just want to hold on to it as long as possible. Over the last decade of Whitney's life playing sports has been a true lifesaver. It kept her busy and out of trouble and made her a more social person. But most importantly, it made Whitney who she is today, an educated woman. The fact that sports got me a scholarship to come to college, so it actually helped me out through college and helped me become a better person as an adult as well. Just as Whitney was finishing up high school at Saginaw Arthur Hill and about to head off to college at Central Michigan University, Whitney set out to find her biological father. The internet, out of all places, ended up helping her fulfill that goal. I went into a criminal justice class in high school, and our, one of our senior projects was to search someone. And I decided to search my real father since I knew his name. And I got six numbers, and I called everyone until I got his, until I got his voice. And so that's how that worked out. Not only was Whitney the first person in her family to graduate high school, she was the first to attend college. When she got to Central, she only had $25 in prayers from her family that she would make it. A couple years later, Whitney would tell you that she grew tremendously academically, socially, and athletically, and it's thanks to one reason, mental toughness. Coming from a situation where you know you can be broken easily, and to come into a track and and have someone push you to the extreme that you know Division I athletics does and to not give up. Mental toughness is definitely one of the best qualities that I've gotten out of the athletic department here. No matter what the challenge, Whitney refused to give up. Quitting wasn't an option for her because she knew if she did, she would wind up on the street selling drugs just like many of her siblings. Even injuries suffered during her track career couldn't hold her back. You know, I've been through two knee surgeries, ACL tear, meniscus tear, three holes in my bones, a cyst on my MCL. It was definitely a struggle. Uh, there was times where I felt like I wasn't going to ever do track anymore because the doctor pretty much told me that eventually you're going to need a knee replacement. And so I, in my head I'm thinking, well I'm done. They're going to pull my scholarship and I'm going to have to drop out of school. But that's when that mental toughness came in. And once again, Whitney overcame it. Going back a few years, at one point, Whitney only knew of Saginaw, Michigan. The track and field star from Arthur Hill High School now sees a bigger picture. I mean... I know there's a world and I know that I have endless opportunities. I know that Central Michigan has set a strong base for me to proceed with a strong and successful career. And I know that one day I'm going to travel this whole world and I'm going to see 
and go back and tell everyone that there is so much more than Saginaw, Michigan, and that I am a witness and I made it out. She certainly has. And to wrap it all up, Whitney once said this statement, only those who risk going so far can possibly find out how far one can go. Central Michigan University is a testament to that because they've seen firsthand how far Whitney Johnson can go. The rest of the world is now waiting for their opportunity to see this strong-willed individual who overcame so many obstacles to now stand up and say that not only is she a soon-to-be college graduate, but most importantly, a survivor and a prime example to others that you can make it because Whitney Sharice Johnson has done just that.